There's no doubt that the addition of uh, rituximab to immunochemotherapy in follicular lymphoma is associated with very good outcomes. So induction followed by rituximab maintenance, our expectation of median progression-free survival is in excess of five years. However, giving rituximab is associated with inconvenience for the patient because they have to come and have a, an intravenous infusion, which may be several hours, um, and also healthcare sort of resource utilization. It's a lot of time for people to be sitting in chairs. So subcutaneous rituximab is a new formulation of rituximab. The rituximab is concentrated 12-fold and with that is human hyaluronidase which uh, essentially allows uh, a larger volume of subcutaneous injection. So we have a 12 mil injection which we can give over just six minutes. And we'd previously established in, in the first part of Sabrina and in other studies that the equivalent dose was 1400 milligrams subcutaneous to the IV dose and it really established a flat dosing schedule. So in the Sabrina study, this is a randomized phase three study um, looking at patients with follicular lymphoma with an indication for therapy. They were treated with a chemotherapy backbone of CHOP or CVP, and they were randomized to receive subcutaneous rituximab or intravenous rituximab. And they received six to eight cycles. And for those patients who achieved a complete or partial response, they continued with maintenance rituximab, either IV or subcut according to the arm that had, they had been entered into for a period of two years. I think it's really important to note that actually um, all the patients in the subcut arm had an IV infusion of rituximab to start off with. So the study was um, powered for equivalence in terms of pharmacokinetics in the first stage, which we've already demonstrated. And now what we present at ASH this year is updated information regarding um, efficacy and safety. So there were 400 patients in the study. We see that the overall response rates and the complete response rates, both assessed by the investigators and by an independent review committee, were exactly the same between the subcutaneous and the um, intravenous rituximab-treated patients. We also looked at the response rates according to the body surface area of the patients. Because in the, in the move to a fixed dosing from a per meter square dosing, we had some concerns that some of the bigger people may be potentially underexposed. And when we looked at the response rates according to body surface area, what we saw is the response rates were exactly the same even in those patients with the highest body surface area. Importantly, we present some time to event analysis and we can see that the progression-free survival is identical between the subcutaneous and the IV treated group and also the overall survival. So absolutely the switch in formulation has no impact upon the efficacy of rituximab. The safety signals are exactly as one would expect with rituximab, although we do see a slight increase in um, it, uh, administration rea related reactions in the subcutaneous arm and those are largely there's a bit of erythema, uh, swelling under the skin which was grade one and, and fully reversible. So nothing new in the safety profile. So really what, what Sabrina shows in the phase three setting is that the switch in formulation has no impact upon uh, efficacy and safety of rituximab.